that's also worth kind of kind of getting into here. We're going to go through, and Larry's going to show in a minute here, some of the things that were added in 852 that are taking advantage of JavaScript. But I wanted to go through and just very quickly show um, some additional tooling that, that oh, Oracle has put in place with People People Tools 852. So above and beyond some of the features where Oracle is actually using a lot of JavaScript themselves as part of the you know the features and functions that People Tools provides, there's a new capability here for people doing advanced development where you can actually get in. And there's no delivered examples here. This particular environment, um, uh, this is the uh, Financials uh, 9 one with Feature Pack 2, um, which is the, you know, that's the absolute latest and greatest, and that, that requires People Tools 8.5.2 now, uh, and then load it up with the People Tools 8.4 in here. But if we were to go through here, what this inter-window communication does is it lets you go through and define different things, like let's say that um, maybe I was going to do, I'll just pick an example here. So basically pick some sort of a different uh, portal object, typically a page load or something on the home page. And in here, you would go through and define, um, you know, when you go through and, for example, you see that you have two different types of events here. You can either be publishing events or subscribing to them. And what can happen here in the case of, uh, let's go through and from an event field event type, you can have a couple different things that you tie to activity on the pagelet. So in the case of, of publishing information, it might be something like I you know, select a customer ID that I'm working with or an employee ID or something like that. Or it could be a particular field where there's a button or some other activity. So that I could either be changing a particular value or it could be something where I'm going ahead and clicking on it. And in this particular case, this is also where, um, where some knowledge of how the, the JavaScript inside of PeopleSoft works comes into play. Because you'll see here it references HTML field names. So when you're going through and setting this up that you want to go through and, and indicate that when something happens, say, you know, clicking on employee, that you want to have other pagelets know that the employee is being changed, you actually need to know what the, not the PeopleSoft record and field, but what is the HTML field name that'll be in the browser because this doesn't, the, the communication between the different pagelets doesn't go back to the server for processing. It actually ha happens directly in the browser. So this is another place where some of the different browsers have some handy things. So for example, if I wanted to know what is the HTML field name for a particular field, inside of Chrome, if I right click on this, and there's plugins for the other browsers that do similar things, but I can go ahead and just click inspect element and you can see we've got some, you know, some deeply nested. Uh, uh, here, let me go ahead and expand this a bit so folks can see it better. So as we've gone through here, and it's highlighted this particular field here, you can actually see that here is the actual HTML name that PeopleSoft is generating for that. And typically, what you'll see is that that actually does look a lot like the record and field name that you're working with. Um, but that uh, it may be slightly different because if there's duplicate fields on the page, there may be some, uh, you know, some distinct, uh, you know, some uh, extra characters to make the fields distinct from the browser's perspective. So, you know, so some of those things um, of being able to go through and kind of dig in and, you know, have some of the extra tools that the browsers provide help you see and understand more about what People Tools is doing is, uh, is definitely very useful. So, you know, as you go through and set these up, you would, you know, tie this to a particular HTML field name, and then you can have additional ones that would go through and subscribe to that information. And on the subscribing side, they may go through and say, great, you know, if, if the employee ID has been refreshed somewhere else, I want to go through and do a complete refresh of my pagelet data, you know, if I've got charts or what have you, uh, to go through and redisplay all those. So, you know, essentially it's not anything that you couldn't do before. If you, you know, if you look at, you know, a lot of the things like Jim Marion has put out in uh, some of his uh, the tips and techniques in his People Tools book, um, but this kind of lets you get at a higher level in terms of defining some of these things, uh, even though you still do need to uh, have a, a decent understanding of what's happening at the, uh, at the browser level. So, um, 
as we go through and, and take a look at some more uh, of the new features in 852, they're actually taking advantage of some of this technology under the covers. So this is also another good reason to, uh, to learn a bit about it um, as there's places where the applications are delivering these things. Um, you know, certainly anybody who, who gets involved in, you know, troubleshooting things or a power user that helps other people, it's kind of worth knowing, you know, what's going on under the covers. You know, and again, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not code that's installed, but it's certainly, you know, not, not quite the, uh, the no code in the client days anymore. So why don't we go ahead and uh, let's jump back to the, uh, uh, the slides here, Larry. One of the things I also wanted to mention is a couple of the techniques that Chris had just talked about we'll be covering in an upcoming webinar on March 7th, and it's best practices in, in troubleshooting PeopleSoft. And so, you know, troubleshooting these JavaScript issues and, you know, and things like that, we'll definitely be going into more detail, but we thought it would be pertinent to talk about this today um, just because it, uh, it was one of the things that we hit right off the bat in terms of installing and getting, uh, getting our environment up and going. So, all right, so let's move on. So a um, couple of things. Now, I'm not going to go into much detail on the app designer uh, changes because a lot of these are just developer productivity enhancements versus things that uh, are going to enhance the application itself. So, um, you know, from a development perspective, there are a lot of things for auto-sizing labels. And if you have hidden fields, you, uh, you actually can see where they are in app designer a bit better. Um, you know, those sorts of things. So really there's a handful of features that have come in in that spot. So um, um, so, uh, and so, one of the ones that actually came up as well is, is the defaulting piece. And, and Chris, I know that you've had a little bit of experience with the, uh, the grid defaulting side of things, so I thought you might want to elaborate in terms of the impact of that and the benefit of that feature. Yeah, and this is something that actually um, kind of uh, we didn't read the release notes carefully enough originally and kind of caught us off guard at first, um, and it's something worth, worth pointing out to folks. For folks that have power users out there that go in and, you know, tailor the grids and get into the personalization feature and change the column ordering and, you know, so, you know essentially get the grid all set up for their, you know, their, their power data entry, um, as you go through and make changes to the grid um, and update that, you end up, you know, basically those personalizations get reset. And so as you're going through and do doing, you know, development or modifications or things, that's something that, you know, you need to keep in mind is that, you know, for people that, that do have, you know, that are your power users and, and getting in and tailoring the grids to their own, you know, personal, personal needs, you know, they're not going to be super happy when they're, they're changes get get blown away so we'll be uh, we'll be diving into that a little bit more deeply uh, in the future and looking at you know there's some way you know because all the, those personalizations are stored in tables so you know I think it, it should be fairly straightforward to go through and come up with a way to uh, you know to save and restore those um, but it's definitely something that you know should get going with a uh, you know a tools upgrade and start pushing this out to people to be aware that that's going to happen um, uh, so those power users don't come and uh, you know come bearing torches to your office and uh, try to uh, you know storm the storm the doors. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about intro window. Uh, yeah. You have a question um, uh, pertaining to how long it actually took to get something like this up and running. Oh, okay. Yeah, to get the to get the thing, the, the the product installed and get get up and going. So, um, so I know uh, 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 you and uh, Kevin, you and Chris, kind of uh, you know, led the charge on doing uh, doing pieces of that. So, um, Chris, why don't I uh, punt this back to you and see see what you think, and then see if there's anything that Kevin wants to add. Uh, sure. Well, one I guess one thing to point out is that you know, as part of the 852 upgrade is that there are a number of places where, you know, underlying dependencies bumped up. So, you know, we had, a, you know, some spare machines that had Windows Server 2003 on it still. Um, that's no longer supported. So, 
you know, it's not a not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but certainly, you know, depending on how you're actually planning your upgrade and, you know, if you're doing it more as a, you know, kind of a, a side project uh, versus something that, you know, is, you know, has active hardware assigned to it and things like that, that's certainly something that you'll want to be aware of um, uh, in terms of your initial planning. Um, Kevin, did you want to add some more on, on the install process? No, the, the install process has changed uh, slightly. Um, it was more of a matter of getting your head around um, the different steps uh, from the prior uh, people tools. So um, there, there was some differences that you really needed to kind of pay attention to. But, um, you know, there really wasn't anything big and, and um, anything that, that, that just held us up from progressing outside of the, the, the bugs that we've already talked about. Now, one one thing I will mention, and this is kind of you know depending on what apps that you have, um, depending on you know where the applications are in terms of of getting uh, you know getting their upgrade uh, process certified on eight five two. I know there's some differences out there, so that's something that you'll want to you'll want to check on. Um, probably the uh, you know the the biggest one to mention with that is the you know the campus solutions um, is there's the, you know, that was uh, you know there's there's Activity going on with that, um, so there, you know, because of the uh, the continuous delivery model. So there's a uh, there's some um, you know some differences between the applications for that, and one place where that actually comes up uh, as part of the 852 is that People Tools 852, as uh, Larry had shown in the slide earlier, has the you know, has the support for having all of the applications installed separately from people tools so that you know ostensibly you can share one set of people tools between all of the different um, you know applications that you're using um, one thing to keep in mind with that is that you know not if you're if you're just upgrading you know an, a much older application release and it doesn't you know it's not aware of the support within people tools that you know that's some you know you may you may not want to go through and start taking advantage of that because then you're going to have to you know kind of wrestle with the application side. Now, if you're up with the more you know the applications that are are current and you know are coming out and utilizing 852, then that's not so much of an issue. But because you know some people are on older applications but just taking advantage of the tools upgrade, you know you do want to be aware of that 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 is something that um, you know it can it can you know, end up causing you a bit more work to try to take advantage of that. Okay, thanks, Chris. Um, so, all right. Well, that was a very good question. Um, and so, what we'll do is, um, so what I wanted to do is kind of move move on a little bit. Um, and uh, and so, we, you know, Chris had talked a little bit about some of the portal changes with the inner window communication. Uh, one of the things as well is the related content service. Um, you know, there were some uh, some enhancements just in terms of, uh, of of some of the features related to that, and expanded a bit, as well as the the pagelets 